Oh my god, my chair's collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, oh, yeah. God. You're I right, yeah. Yeah. Can I go and grab a beer? Yeah. How long are you going to eat? Should I just eat my crisps? Hey? Should I just eat my crisps? Yeah, you, you, eat listen, you, eat this fucking, you eat your fucking crisps. And All right. I'll, uh, I'm going to get a beer. <laughs> All good? Oh, yeah. Yes. Hostage, AKA government name. Ruan. 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 Right. Ruan. So, Ruan is self isolation. Current yeah. situation. Current self isolation situation. Tell me, tell me what your daily routine is right now. Okay, I get up. Um, I go straight into the studio. It's actually not much different than like my normal day. Basically, I just get up, go into the studio, pretend I know what I'm doing for a couple of hours. Then I go downstairs and I, I make myself brunch. Then I go back into the studio, pretend to know what I'm doing some more. Um, and then I go downstairs and then I cook. So basically, more. basically you're bouncing between your studio and your kitchen. That's my life. And, and that's, that, and that's your life that. anyway. Yeah, literally. So I'm doing the um, like fasting, only eating between 12 and 8. So. Okay. I've done that before. It's, it works. It's like, but apparently, it really, it's like really good, but I've got to do something, otherwise I will be huge. Listen, this in the past two weeks, I have cooked batches of Madras, Rogue and Josh, lasagna, brown stew chicken, <laughs> and <laughs> Do you want to send some to me? <laughs> I can if you want. Yeah, if, you get, if it gets like really good. This, is, this is your new occupation. It is meals on wheels. Yes. Or not wheels. Like I don't know what I'm gonna send them. Meals on drones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do you think though, despite the fact that your day is basically the same, do you think being on lockdown with everything that's going on, do you think it has made any difference to your productivity? Yeah, it actually has. Um because before I would probably just like I don't know, like just kind of float about and this has kind of been like, well, can't really, go, can't really go outside, do you know what I mean? If I just want to shoot off, like, to go and grab my kids or I just mm. want to go and do some crazy shopping trip, like, or go and have an espresso martini, I can't do that now. So, I, yeah, basically, I just, yeah, it has made me knuckle down and do some, and um, I'm, like, in the middle of a big project as well. So it's probably come at the right time for me because it was always going to be tight for me to deliver, but apparently now it's fine. Yeah, so it's basically, like, there's less options for distraction now. There's no distraction now, is there? Like, there's literally none. So what's this project then? Can you tell me about it? Ooh, maybe. I'm writing <laughs> an album. You're writing an album. I am writing a solo voltage album. Um, because this year is 10 years that I've been releasing music. So, okay. um, yeah. So does, it have, writing... does, it, does it have a name yet? It doesn't have a name. I, like, I think I might just title it Voltage. Just... Okay. Um, cause I have done a couple of albums before, like I've done a debut album on Low Down Deep in 2015 and then me and Serum done an album on Low Down Deep, um, maybe 2017. Um, so, and then obviously we, we had the Kings of the Rollers album out, like, so mm -hmm. but I've had a few albums about, but I don't think there's ever been, I don't think I've had like a body of work, which is this is going to be a lot more musical, you know? There's a lot more, it's this massive intro, it's really deep, like such a deeper side, what I guess people have only seen flashes of on like Metalheads and Spearhead and do you know what I mean? Like just these little flashes now and then Shogun when I've popped up and done these labels. Um, but obviously my more constant output has always been pretty upfront and jump up, I guess, so. Um, so do you yeah. think do you think you would have been able to put the same level of maybe like versatility into an album at any other point in your career? Or do you think it actually has taken you to get to this point to be able to build this body that's like taken from so many different styles? Oh definitely like I would like it's take those tunes what I've finished for this project, what I've gone back to, you know, some of the strings and stuff mm -hmm. I wrote like four or five years ago and it's things that I've never really had the skills or 
just the kind of like the know-how or do you know what I mean or the matureness is the word I'm looking for like the matureness to you know I've had the ideas but not had the matureness in my music to actually finish them and make them a complete track you know so it's been quite nice being able to go back to these ideas I yeah I'm definitely in the right place for it and you know my engineering seems to be in a really good point as well so it's um yeah it's it's good timing it's actually really good timing for it what sort of percentage do you think you're at for completion um I think I have like so in the folder there's probably like 12 sketches and I like I think I'm gonna finish another one tonight mm. um so probably got like in between 12 and 13 tracks at the minute. Well, that's quite a lot. How many are you going to have? <laughs> uh, I'm not letting anyone know how many I'm having, but I'm going to like, I'm dead probably by the time I've got to deliver, by the, so when it comes to like final mix down week, um, then I don't know, I'll probably have like 20 or 30 to pick from, you know, maybe 25. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of vocalists getting involved, like different vocalists and Sick. Like, like it's interesting people that just probably wouldn't expect me to be working with as well, you know. So um Is there anything outside of the obvious that you've noticed yourself missing doing whilst we've been isolated? Shopping. Shopping what like clothes shopping, yeah? Clothes shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not that I have any money anymore to go close. But to, so, do you? Do you like? Do you go into shops? That's how you shop. You don't order online. I, I hate ordering online because I like to. Um, I'm really funny. I don't even like. I don't like ordering stuff from my studio online or anything. I hate it. Like that must I be like, quite hard though to like. Well, actually, where do you go? I mean, where do you go to buy studio equipment in person? Um, like PMT in Bristol. I get. I buy a lot of yeah. gear from there. Don't get me wrong. Like processing gear and stuff, I buy from SX Pro. Um, which is obviously delivery, but if I could, I would go and pick it up. I'm not a fan of like, I just, I'm very impatient. So like, and I'm impulsive as well. So I could wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I want this synth, but I want to go and get it now. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I'm quite, yeah, I miss that because I am impulsive. I never plan anything. I'm just like, oh, I wake up in the morning and like, oh, I really want that jumper. So I'm going to go and get it today. Like, So obviously you're quite um, out there with your fashion sense. <laughs> I, I'm, come on. I'm, you like I'm, your labels. I, You're a little bit of a label. I, do, I, am, I, I love it. I love it. I, ju I just, I am really addicted to fashion. I've got a bad addiction to fashion. Some of it is probably a bit questionable. And like, it, like every couple of years, I'll look at stuff I've been wearing and I think, ooh, that's probably a bit much. <laughs> you, you look like Timmy Mallet, but I enjoyed it at the time. It's a, it's a form of self expression. You're obviously a very expression y person. <laughs> it's, it's, Expressive is the word you are looking for. <laughs> Expression y. That is amazing. That's like, the name of your next track. <laughs> Expression <-y> VIP. Wow. <laughs> Expression y. So, what's, so where do you shop then in store? Harvey, yeah. I do like Harvey Nicks only because they've got one in Bristol though and it's close to me. So I do go in there a lot. Um, John Anthony in Bristol as well. Um, and obviously Selfridges, which is my favourite shop in the whole world. <laughs> You're probably going to have some of your kids aka fans like hanging around outside bristol harvey nichols hoping to see you <laughs> in, in the in like the machino it. section <laughs> they all know me in there anyway like, <laughs> working there is sound they actually sort me out when i go in there they're like hey voltage yeah come and try this on come try this on they actually just want me to spend money nice they're doing their job then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah with regards to getting back to the rave which hopefully we will do at some point who knows yeah, when too. I mean, to, tonight, tonight would be ideal. Tonight would be banging. <laughs> Me and you are already, are already on the drinks, ready. <laughs> yep, got the rum and coke. So do you think when we do go back that the atmosphere or attitude from like everyone, like the ravers, the staff, the artists, do you think it will be different? I think there's going to be a lot of initial gratefulness. Um, I think it's almost going to be kind of like I wouldn't I, I don't want to sound extreme but do you know like when like the war finished and everyone had like their tables out in the streets with like it's with actually not extreme stuff. though is it it's, it's not, extreme not extreme because that is what this is extreme no, listen this is it we're in extreme times yeah yes. it feels like I'm in the war I'm, yes. listen, I'm rationing myself to like portions of curry what is that about like I reckon it's going to be this very like 
you know, togetherness. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be nice. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I don't know how long it'll last for. You know, things will be well yeah, pretty quick. You're right. I didn't oh. think about how long it would last, actually. Nah, I, I mean, you know, everyone slips back into their old way, old routines or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So, but I think the initial, yeah, when we come back, it's going to be nice. I mean, it's only been a week. And by the sounds yeah. of it, it hasn't that really has affected been you. Been about, about six months. No, of, of being on lockdown. Well, it feels like six months. Feels like six months. Does your hair? Does your hair feel like it's been six months? No, don't start. <laughs> don't start, man. Don't start. Honestly, it's depressing. It's depressing. I actually, I can't see anyone. Yeah, I can't. I can't see anyone. Like until I, from this point now, until I get into a barber, no one can see me. So Whether I caught you like on the tail end of acceptability. <laughs> Literally, right on the. End. Yeah, like on the ends, like when when my hair's freshly done, like I can just get up and not even put any product in it or anything, like Ooh. not even with it. I know, like like <laughs> like my hair. I woke up like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally, I wake up like yeah, like the little, the little <laughs> line like fresh, and I'm like yeah. It's not, it's not good at the minute, man. My beard's all out of shape. I've got the grey hairs coming through and. The line, the, you know, the flashy little go faster stripe in the side of my head is disappearing. And Have you learned anything about yourself so far in how you've coped with this, in, you know, your mindset, essentially? Um, yeah, I think I'm quite like, I'm quite a warrior, I think. And I never thought I was. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I've kind of, I've had a little couple of moments this week where like my mood has been like really like really really low and down I've just been like worrying about a lot of stuff and I don't know I don't think I've ever been like that in my life really I don't really worry about stuff I just get on with it do you know what I mean but yeah I think um you kind of need to be prepared for like anything really do you know what I mean you can't just like I think when this is over I don't think I'll be so like fly through life so wild you know because I am quite like a bit out of control, do you know what I mean? Like, do you I do mean like in to... terms of like your health and stuff, or? It's, yeah, quite a lot of it, like my health, um, like my rec, I'm like wild with money, do you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. am like- uh, Yeah, that's a good point, because our careers like, are, are not, I never, I never would have thought that doing this job would be at risk of like, going from what it was to zero, overnight. Zero, like, like and literally overnight, and um. I think, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not in as bad as boat as, as some people. There's always people worse off, but, yeah. um, you know, like I th our, our careers kind of let us, you know, live quite a, quite a, you know, a good lifestyle. And there's, there's this like slight shock to the system that like, wow, like. It's like how point. necessary is this job to the survival of humanity? <laughs> not very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even not though it, it kind of like, like obviously it's an escapism and it's like it's the entertainment industry, but really, like when it comes down to it, you know, we're kind of disposable, which sounds really weird. But like, like we were like first on the chopping block. It was like, hey, exactly. I'm kind of hoping. I am still hopeful that July time we can get back in the clubs. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm, I'm thinking I, end of July onwards, hopefully. I miss it, man. Like, I miss it so much. Like, mm. I don't know what to do with myself come on a weekend. Like, last week I went and DJed for four hours at rough tempo. Do you know what I mean? Like, Which a I lot of people that. appreciated. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they did. But, like, I'm, I'm not joking you. Like, I needed it as much as everyone else. Yes, you know? I hear that. Like, badly. I DJed for four hours. I didn't even go to the toilet. I was, mm. I, there's no way I was leaving the decks. Yeah. There's just... In it. Did you feel um, kind of sad when it was over then? Because it's like, when am I going to do this again? It, honestly, mm. I could have mixed for like, I reckon I could have mixed for eight hours. But I just did not want to leave the decks, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. and that's, that was kind of like, it was, that was like, you know, I had that adrenaline rush. And it's hard to describe the energy that you feel in a festival or like yeah. in a good rave. Um, yeah. it, it is like addictive and it does. It's well addictive. Yeah, but it's it's positive. Like, I mean, this is the other thing. The realisation that I'm 
I've managed to get to a point where I can make a living through doing this. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing it. You've been doing that for longer than I have. And I've already started. I already now I'm looking back and thinking, oh, maybe like actually I did start to take that for granted a little bit. Yeah. So it's, easy to fall, it's easy to fall into that trap though, because because when you get to that point where it just becomes regular and you're out every week, it kind of just like carries on and carries on. Do you know what I mean? And like, I think that's the one good thing about the scene is that as long as you keep you keep putting in, the scene yeah. will give out. So like, you're just out there every week. Do you know what I mean? Every week, and it it just turns into a blur. Do you know like just a massive blur of like fun times and being tired and you know memories and getting drunk and do you know what i mean all these things and then you just forget that like you're in this you know really really special place and yeah it's and you forget about like what's actually holding it up just just having that the whole like not just us but the whole like entertainment industry stripped away yeah from you know from society is just like a massive shock to the system because mm -hmm. people have no release now do you know what i mean and that's like the mental effect side of it is you know i do wonder where where that will go with some people especially with artists and creative people and things like that because we need an outlet do you know what i mean like we're wired up this way mm -hmm. like if people don't have that release then you know what effect does that have it's it's, it's pretty scary when you think about it but to round off the whole coronavirus subject what would be your top three tips um to you know stay sane and stay healthy at this time um i would say don't drink too much don't get too smashed because like the thing is drink is an antidepressant you know what i mean and it's like i think if you sat on your own and stuff like that and you're just drinking and thinking about things for me yeah. it's more just like i've just been having one in the evening and watching yeah, tv yeah. Not, but more than i ever would normally but then actually yeah. because i'm not doing the whole weekend binge yeah which is like which isn't even that much anymore but like obviously at normally at a show i'm having two or three so i guess yeah. i cut that out so i spread it out yeah. a little bit make sure you go out and get that fresh air like in the day if you can know what I mean you're allowed to get out and, and um just keep on top of your hygiene man like wash your hands wipe down your surfaces brush you know your try and, everything just try and stay try and yeah. try and stay away from people just try and stay away as much as you can because the thing is until until this has got nowhere to go and people have stopped mixing with each other it's not going to go anywhere do you know what I mean like and I, I do think it's going to get worse here in the next couple of weeks, but mm -hmm. how, how bad it gets is determined by whether people just stop mixing with other people. You know, if these people aren't in your household, man, like I ain't seen my, I ain't seen my kids for a week. Do you know what I mean? Really? And that's yeah. Yeah, I'm, like, we don't live in the same house and I'm not going to, I'm not going to see my kids until this is done with because I, I don't want them to infect me. I don't want to infect them. Like you just don't know. Do you know what I mean? So, it's about it being is, selfless, isn't it, really? Yeah, like, honestly, you just have to think about other people. And mm. the best way about to, to think of other people is just keep your own people to yourself for a while. Do you know what I mean? And just keep out of everyone's way. And then hopefully we can kind of get back to normal. Let's just pretend that the first three catastrophic months of 2020 didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and take it back to 2019. Yes. So for the whole of last year... Are there any highlights, like career-wise, that stick out for you at all? Yeah, there's a few. Um, obviously, the Royal Rumbles like that we've done, um, just, just smashed. Like they absolutely smashed. Do you know what I mean? And, Did you have um, a favourite that sticks out to you? The Easter one. Where where, was so, where was that? What venue? Uh, three three eight. Three three eight. Yeah. It banged. It just banged. And um, do you know what? I, the November one was so good as well, though. Like, I just can't. We've got such a huge backing, like for our raid. Like, like I mean, it's nice having a like a wicked backing, um, you know, for your brand, like, and for for your music and stuff. And people buy it and they listen to it and DJs mix it and stuff, you know. But the fact that we've got such a massive raving fan base that just pack out these venues when we go in there it's just it blows me away like every time and the vibes like 
the vibes in there and the two mm-hmm. times that we we've, we've done Royal Rumble in there was just just blew my head off and the hospitality in the park as well like our stage we had a Royal Rumble stage at hospitality in the park and um it was just jammed all day it is like I don't know how many people were in that tent six thousand like five thousand something like that and it was like um Josh from hospitality sent me a picture when I was driving there and they'd been open for 30 minutes and it was full wow and it was just insane like um, well we were obviously together in um Australia yeah we were we should have stayed there <laughs> do you know what's <laughs> mad though I'm like okay cool so we went to Australia and then obviously all those horrendous fires happened I come back I know well, actually, then I went to Dubai, and then it was like, oh, World War Three, Iran, Dubai. And then I come back and... And then... Hey. Anyway, let's take it back to being in Perth, drinking espresso martinis. That was so good. How many espresso martinis do you think you drank on that tour? Um, I don't know. I lost count. Well, I didn't know if it was like a UK thing, the espresso martini. <laughs> I think an espresso martini is pretty universal. That's a bit naive of me to think that. It it? really is. Like, what do you mean people outside of our country don't (laughs) know how to make a drink? (laughs) (laughs) So, like, what what did you make? That was your first time? Uh, No, no, my second time. I have been over there before um, on my own. Me, Headex and Heist went, like, a few years ago. Maybe 2015 or 2016, maybe. Um, That was pretty cool. But this time was like obviously a lot different because we were doing like the um, the festival, like the the festival circuit, which is yeah. like nuts. It is so good. It's so good. I mean, yeah, you done um, Origin, didn't you? So like, mm-hmm. I saved you. Can we not talk about? Right. So basically, <laughs> it's basically it's like the peak of peak of summer in Perth. It was and hot. I am a track to DJ, if anyone doesn't know, and. Um, I decided, for whatever reason, to put my laptop right in the basking of the sun. <laughs> and it basically started melting. Voltage <laughs> was there on the sideline, running in to help me. But the bad thing about Wait, this is, is like, I did like hideout last year in Croatia, and it was so hot, and it was fine, but it- It was hot. It was like crazy hot. I do owe you for that. You do owe me. And, and you came in and put your USB in and you like selected the perfect track as well. Listen, listen, that is what I do. <laughs> that is what I, I do. That is what I do, baby. I've got skills. I don't even know what track I put on. That was just pure luck. I, I do remember. It was the Pilot and Bryce Boot Leg of Circles. Oh, was it really? <laughs> okay, so, let, so let's talk about, let's talk about the most awkward or embarrassing moments that have happened to you whilst you've been working. Uh, That's one of mine potentially. So, in 2017, yeah, um, because the year before I'd won um, like drum and bass awards, um, they asked me to host it, right? And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and I got absolutely steaming, right? So drunk, like, and um. Anyway, I had to go on stage. I think at one point I was like um, chatting, like spitting like Stormin's bars to like 4,000 people on the stage. And, um, and like. Uh, this yeah. must be on camera. This must be, has been filmed, right? Yes, it was right. live. So, what year was this? Let's so everyone can like search it out. 2017. Right, okay. And um, it was on the live feed and everything, man. And like. And, <laughs> like I, they put me on last set. Like, oh, we were doing hosting or not? <laughs> yeah, I was like, honestly, this is no word of a lie. I can't even remember going to the decks. Like, I can't remember playing. I can't remember the first show I played. I haven't got a clue. Still to this day, I can't even remember DJing at that race. But apparently, I did. That was probably that was probably not a good. Um, so you'd say that was the most embarrassing thing that's happened to oh, Wait, I've got one that you told Go on. me about. Go on. So you were playing with Kings of Rollers in, is it Heidelberg? Hospitality? Yeah. And, Maybe. I, and you told me you got the whole crowd to sing Happy Birthday to Inja. <laughs> Which I actually, I actually still stand by the fact that I actually think that's nice. Like, it's not embarrassing. 
but I would have liked to have seen you on the mic, like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, and I was drunk. Actually, <laughs> do you know what, right? This, this is how I know it's really embarrassing. It doesn't look good, yeah, because Serum, yeah, done the same thing to me in Birmingham a few weeks ago. And when I look at the videos back, he is like absolutely steaming because it was actually <laughs> on my birthday, right, yeah? So we got paralytic, so drunk, right? But he's obviously on the mic and he's going, he's going, yes, it's Bumpkin's birthday. <laughs> like, oh, Bumpkin's birthday. Yeah, yeah. When I was like looking at it, like looking at the videos back, and he was going, I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're not absolutely stupid. Now, I, Yeah, but the thing is, I was probably telling, like, I was on the stage giving a full-on speech in English to, like, 12... Oh, my God! Years. They obviously don't sing happy... Did they sing happy birthday in English? Well, they definitely did. I think they... I was, I was pretty drunk. Um, <laughs> that is so funny. Right. I think he enjoyed it, though. It made him smile, but then again, he's all smiling, so I don't really know what's... Yeah, I mean, I who know. knows? Maybe who knows? dying inside. <laughs> right. Maybe inside he's just like... Yeah, he's like, ah, oh, fucking hell. I don't know, like, I definitely, like, stopped the tune, the wrong tune a couple of times. Haven't that's we all? Or like, pulled the wrong one out? Or haven't realised that the crossfader's on? Have yeah. you done that? Um, yeah, I've done that one. So that's why when I always get on now, um, I always check the little buttons, <gasps> at the faders. You've just reminded me of another one as well, actually. You also did actually tell me that a pipe burst um, when you were playing Innovation. Oh my god, that is the most <laughs> why, why, why can I recall your most embarrassing moments better than you? <laughs> oh my god, innovation. Um, you know, in the sun, like yeah. 2016 maybe. And um, so I'm playing, right, yeah? And I'm, and I'm just like going like, to bring this double in. And a double would have landed, it would have been sick. And just as I was about to put it, like, bring the one tune in, like on the build up, this fucking pipe just burst, man, out of this. Like, and it burst with such pressure, it must have been in like a column. And the water burst through the plasterboard <laughs> and it was just coming out. And I had to jump out the way of the decks and it was just flooding the whole stage. But the mix was still running. But when I jumped out of the way, I must have like knocked the deck. Oh. So the mix is like way out of time. Oh, no. And it's in the middle of a really good set. It's like the set's out there and it actually kills me. Like, it kills Wait, me. Wait, so you carried on after? Yeah, of course I did. Oh, cool. That's all right then. And if anybody wants to hear the clang caused by a water pipe, um, it is me and yeah. Baseman 2016 in Owen the Sun. So you need to add a step to your rider. I need to add a ladder. Like I have. Yeah. <laughs> have you really? You know I have. Ah! Well. What's your ride of one bottle of champagne, one step? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've laid off the champagne. Is the champagne coming off the rider now? Um, well, I, I never quite know what I'm going to get because I only changed the rider in December. So sometimes people still have the old one, which is rum. The old one and some... I hate that. I, but, honestly. like, rum is better. Champagne just... It just kills me. It's too much. The next day so like i'm secretly glad now when they still have the old one i need to change it back yeah. i need to change it back who do i think i, I know am? Like, no i won't have the rum i won't have the rum me, have me, me me and ninja me and ninja had have had many a fights over the pink champagne in the riders as you know yeah, you keep it. <laughs> i mean i mean he's never voiced it but like you know i know you are a champagne thief um i mean as he as is he he is. Let's move swiftly on from that subject. <laughs> <laughs> right, so so go right, let's go back further than last year. I am very keen to know, as are many others, of your first experience going out raving. Yes. Where was it? When was it? And what was it to, was it drum and bass? With jungle? What? Um, it was definitely like early jungle. 1994 was the first rave I went to. Evolution 7 at the Sanctuary. Which is and where? It, it, it used to be in Milton Keynes, mm -hmm. V7 Saxon Street. The, the best club we've ever had. Okay. I loved it. I loved it in there. I loved it in there. Um, and it was like this. Like, Evolution was an under 18s rave. Okay. And, and, but it used to have the same lineup. So, so imagine like, 
it was madness. You'd see all these like big raves, like um, at the time, like Dreamscape and Fantasia, and. Um, <clears throat> So what's the typical lineup for that then? Like, is there like, any that you remember? Be, yeah, like it would have been. So then, like, the lineups were still quite mixed as well, because it was kind of like, it was just going, like, it was going into jungle. I suppose like '94, yeah, was like st it was actually jungle then, but yeah. there was still this kind of like crossover point from '93, like from like the jungle techno kind of hardcore, before like the full everything fully split off and. Um, so like I think the first one I went to you had like SS rap, um, maybe Mickey Finn, and then like Dougal, Hixie, and maybe like Vinyl Groover or Easy Groove, maybe something like that. So like some people were playing like the beginnings of like happy hardcore, the end, the end of kind of like hardcore music and some DJs were playing like uh, like jungle and things like that. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of a big melt. Yeah. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. And I went to I went to quite a lot of them like when I was younger, from when I was like fourteen. Yeah, fourteen, thirteen. So and what so they were the underage un, uh, under eighteen ones, yeah. Under range, okay, yeah. so so try and remember this. Like what what do you think you were wearing at those rates? I definitely I think the fact you know what? I only kind of know what I was wearing because um, it's just one of these memories, and I don't have a good memory, but it's just one of these things that sticks out in my mind, because my mum and dad took me and my friend there. Like, my mum and dad, when I, used no to go to, yeah, when I used to go to the raves, the evolution things in the, at the sanctuary, my mum and dad used to drive us, and they'd wait in the car park till the end of the rave, like, at six o'clock in the morning. What? Yeah, these raves used to go on all night. They were like- Well, the they just sit in the car? Yeah. With a book? <laughs> Yeah, but then so, my mum, sometimes, my mum, after the first couple, my mum would come yeah. in and she would, go right. into, she would go into the chill out room and like listen to all the techno and stuff love in that. there. I love I that. Know. That's incredible. She ended, up, she ended up like getting friends, making friends with um, Dougal's dad because Dougal's dad used to be the cameraman who made all the rave videos. Right. So, and my mum met him in there because he used to go on the, the in, if you went out the chill out room in the sanctuary, there was this big balcony where you could look over the top of the dance to the main room. And um, he used to go up there to get a load, load of shots and that. And obviously, like, not many um, just random adults in there. So, like, my mum struck up, like, a friendship with Dougal's That's dad. So, amazing. after a while, my mum just used to go in there and chat to him for ages while we were in there raving. That's so <laughs> cute as well that she made that much of a sacrifice so you could rave. Yeah, like, but my, both my parents, my mum, like, both of them, but my mum more, I guess, is, like, they're both music mad, do you know what I mean? Mm. So... So like, she she wanted she wanted an in anyway. <laughs> yeah, she probably did actually. She probably did. Don't I you think, think it's funny, there. like as well, like thinking about chill out rooms in clubs? Like, do they exist anymore? I don't think so. But like, I used to love the chill out rooms. It was just room two now, isn't it? Like, they just yeah. used to room, like it definitely used to be a chill out room up there, and then you'd have like, I suppose you know, like your up and coming DJs playing in there and stuff. You know, that'd be pretty. I didn't even think about that at the time. I guess I kind of I'm fab sure. fabric still has like a few areas that are kind of like with sofas and stuff. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. But your newer clubs like E1, like there's not a seat in sight, mm. which is quite interesting. I don't think they promote that anymore. But then I think the numbers, like the numbers in like, I mean, it's this year, it kind of, well, not this year, last year, I, I feel like we've been on this steady climb again. Like when I was raving in like 96, 97, 98, the race was just massive, just like huge. What are we talking it, like capacity wise, or like? I wouldn't even know. Like, et, like things like Energy ninety seven, Hell to Scout. Yeah. I didn't know what the capacity it was. Massive. It was huge. Like, like where, really, like, what we like warehouse, like. Yeah, like so. Like things say, like Milton Keynes. Yeah, when they used to have, um, they used to open like the two opposites. So you had the sanctuary one side, and then across the car park you had. Um, this other building called Rollers, yeah, which is like re really weird now. Yeah. I think it's like I think yeah. it might have been like um, indoor like skating arena or something like that. Um, but they used to use the two. They used to open rollers up and have like two main arenas, and you go between. Well, when you it, go, that is yeah, that's sick, insane. man. Yeah, it was so sick. Just like, and then I feel like I when the garage came in, and like the crowd started to change. Because I definitely fell out of like love with drum and bass, jungle, 
around 2000, 2001, I guess. Um, and even I was mad on Garage for like a, quite a few years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe like, like 2000, I reckon. Um, but I think that was just a general shift. Like a lot of people just kind of went because they didn't identify with the music where it had gone quite dark and lost the rag of samples. And do you know what I mean? The crowd changed. So I think like a lot of numbers kind of went over to the garage scene. And then I just feel like from that point, you kind of had like this dip, like drum and bass has always been there. And it's always, you know, there's always been like big, massive points throughout that time. But you know, and produce some like ment like mentally good artists, you know, every couple of years, just insane like people. But I feel like from it's just kind of took this steady climb, like back up, back up, back up to like the end of last year. And it is just it just you know what I mean? It kind of feels like the same. Like you could ask anybody who's been like around in, you know, for twenty odd years or whatever and like immersed in this music, a lot of people, especially old school ravers, would probably mm. say like ninety six, ninety seven was probably like their favourite years. Do you know what I mean? Like it was just in an insane time, like the electric and I kind of feel like we were getting there, do you know what I mean? I almost feel like just the way that the enthusiasm and the talent I think yeah you're totally and I think like the conversations that that happen like obviously not all of it is healthy early on there were the forums storms and acid things like that yeah and now yeah, there's yeah. things like drum and bass talk love it or hate yeah. it it's a outlet for the community essentially massive I think there's like 50,000 members in DMB talk you know yeah which is insane which is insane but like that is kind of that is like the core of our of our scene, like whether people like to admit that or not, you know, like the kids that are in that group, they're the kids that sell out the venues They're now. the kids that are going out. I, I totally agree. Of course, they are. of course they are. They're the kids that are like mm. making our show sell out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So like you kind of have to, yeah, like it's Take note. <laughs> yeah. Well, God, you can't, like, you can't fault passion, can you, at the end of the day? No, no, no. And that's, that's what I'm saying, like, in like 96, 97, everybody wanted to be a jungle DJ. Everybody wanted to be Skibber. Every MC in the world that was up and cut, like used to spit bars in their bedroom, everybody wanted to be Skibber D. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that's just how it was. And like, do you know when you just kind of see that same cycle again of less mm -hmm. like, me, it feels, it feels like I'm 17 again, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's wicked. Yeah. Bang it. Like I, I've had a lot of questions sent in and a lot yeah. of them are around the theme of, up and coming producers, DJs. Yeah. I want to ask you what your free tips are, but I also want to talk about like the don'ts as well, because there's been a lot about yeah. sharing dubs and things like that. Um, so yeah. like, I want to know what would you recommend doing, but also what would you recommend not doing? <laughs> um, I think doing, I've always kind of been of the opinion that if you think you're working as hard as you can work, then times that like by a hundred. Like I've always like driven myself so much more, so much more. Even when things have been going like, do you know when you get a little, you get a little hype or you know you get a little buzz around your name. It's very easy to just go, oh, I'll ride that for the minute. Like don't like that's mm. when you should like. So you've got like definitely a do is just like work yourself, work, work, work. Always try and. Just try and be better, do you know what I mean? Like the way I think you should always wanna your next product, your next mix, your next DJ set, your next release, everything should be better, do you know what I mean? Like you should always there's always a You're way only to as good as your last set. <laughs> really are, like literally. I like, agree. True. You are like, you know, all there's always a way to improve yourself. Like no one no one's perfect. I think um I think the minute you kind of feel that you know everything, then you're kind of done. Mm. You know, if you feel that you have nothing to learn in this music, then yeah, you're you're not going to be around for very long because, like I, I've been making tunes for for ten years, eleven years, and like I still learn something every day. I still feel that I'm, I still don't feel like I've put out my best, like the best of what I want to achieve. Do you know what I mean? Like so. I think you've always got to have that mentality because that's how you keep you keep building. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's there's probably more don'ts than do's. A lot of the do's are like 
kind of obvious. Yeah, kind I hear that. Obvious. Like, it's you so can apply it to any area of life. It's like work yeah, ethic. Of course you can. And, yeah. Of course you can. Like, you should have good work ethic is the words I'm looking for. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I think there's the don'ts are just, it's actually ridiculous at the minute. Um, there's like, there's like a total lack of like etiquette. You know, and there was these, there's been these like unwritten rules around for so long and it just, it seems to have all gone out the window almost, you know, and even when people who have been in this game for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, like when they voiced it, it kind of just gets like a little bit attacked on by the younger kids, like the younger generation, like, oh, it's fucking moaning old bastards, whatever, do you know what I mean? It's like, well, not really because in comparison to everywhere else, we are such a small scene. Yes. And we always have been. Yeah. You know, we might have these random acts who break through into the overground every four or five years or mm -hmm. whatever, you mm -hmm. know, will pop up to every 10 years, you know, and it's even that is still very rare mm -hmm. out of our scene, mm -hmm. you know, so we are still very much an underground scene. It's a small pot, isn't it? Do you remember it's, it's small, it's tiny compared to other, compared to other scenes. Mm -hmm. Like, just it, and people don't realize this because this music kind of like drowns you and immerses you, you end up in this little bubble. Do you know what I mean? So, you kind of think, like, yes, you know, drum and bass is like you're in that magnified, drum and bass is your mm -hmm. bubble. yeah, it's mm -hmm. like it's magnified. And, um, this just the whole like etiquette thing has kind of gone out the window, man. So, like, if, if it's not protected, you know, it could eat away at, at certain things in this scene very quick, you know. and at the end of the day, people are passionate, you know, people are passionate about it. And I think that there's lines, you know, like it, unwritten rule, you never shit on your own doorstep. Like you don't, you, you can't like bootleg a tune what come out two weeks ago. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. like, I've seen bootlegs of like Eni sink in. Like there's, it seems to like a trend, oh, a tune comes out, let's bootleg it. Like, oh, I'll make my own version. Like you can't do that. Like if you, you know, everyone's heard the stories and stuff like you just can't you know like i think where this music isn't so like driven by the street anymore it's not so much of a road music like when i got into this music this music was music for the road do you know what i mean like like drill is now you know the jungle was the music that came out of the streets like like drill has do you know what i mean and that was mm. now because it's not that you don't really have that like that like kind of road mentality that comes alongside it. So you couldn't do these things years ago because people would just end up getting punched in the face or chucked down set stairs. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So like and some people would say, Oh yeah, but you can't treat people like that or whatever, but like people are passionate about their music because at the end of the day, we're not we're not like David Getter sat in a mansion, you know what I mean, charging a hundred and fifty grand a set, like a lot it of feels very personal, doesn't it? It's well personal mm. because a lot of us have to like sweat and you know and put our life like put our whole lives into getting the equipment that we want and you know have driven ourselves crazy you know, to get a piece of music out of our head into a computer. Do you know what I mean? And like it's very personal. It is very mm. personal. If there's an old old school tune that you want to bootleg. Yeah, chances are you can probably do it, but like you've got to go the right way about it. Like, at least if you're going to bootleg a tune, if you think you can do it justice, yeah? I mean, you've got to have balls to do bootlegs. I've done a few and sometimes it's paid off. A couple of times it hasn't. And I've had, I've had an angry, I've had it. I have had an have angry. You? you have, yeah. Yeah, mate. I've, listen. Tell me. Uh, me and Turno bootlegged uh, the Superman tune on Urban Takeover a few years ago, right? When was that? Nikki, oh, like maybe 2015, 2014. Right. Okay. Mickey Finn went sick. He went sick. Like, at that, do you know what? From that day, like, and that was a little slip. But was, that was like the littlest slip. Do you know what I mean? It's like, we, we didn't even give it out. We had played, me and Turner had played it out. And someone had said to Mickey about it. And he just went mad. Like, some people just won't have it. Some people will, some people won't. That's the chance you take. But, at least have the It's almost like a bit of a tough love thing as well, isn't it? Like I saw yeah. I saw Serum's thread about it and it's kind of like yeah. it's is it the the intent is 
to be educational, not accusational. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah, like definitely. no one wants you to lose, but at the same no, time, right. it's like you need to understand the respect. Like, you need to understand yeah, respect. Like, mm, the climate. Like, uh, the that's actually a really good way to put it. Like, I th- I guess some people feel like you're attacking them, and you're going, "Oh no, you can't do that." Like, do you mm. know what I mean? Uh, 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 like, I'm going to use my powerful status to crush you down or whatever. Like it's a like, power no, trip I'm, thing. Yeah, like, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not about that. It's not about that. No. Do you know what, right? Blade Runner, yeah, has probably remixed more tunes than anybody in this scene, right? Classic tunes. And probably does them better than anybody ever will. Do you know what I mean? Like, as far as remixes go, remixing old tunes, he is the guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, the only reason, it, like, he he can do it now, like is because he like there's etiquette to it. You do it, you send it to the original artist. That conversation goes one way or the other. I love it. Well done. That's a great job. Let's see if we can do something with it. No, I don't like it. Delete it now. You're a cheeky cunt. Like, <laughs> but that's how it should go. Like that is that that's the chance you take from doing bootlegs. Now I bet nine times out of ten, there's people sat there wishing Dev would probably bootleg their tunes. Do you know what I mean? Just so he, he could give it a really good, like, up to date remix. That's such a it's, good point. Do you know what I mean? But it's mm. because he's but he's know, earned his stripes essentially. Yeah, he's earned his stripes, but he's mm. always gone the the right way about it. Yes. Like uh, I bootlegged uh, do you know, the Reckoning remix. Yeah, that's yeah. just come out today. I bootlegged that for the future album launch. Yeah to intro my set with but I didn't I didn't start handing it out to DJs and that first person I sent it to was Brian you know sent it to Brian sent it to Frost what do you think of this yeah, yeah. we love it we're yeah. doing we, we, we wanted to get you on the album as well let's do it you've done a wicked nice. job mm. do you know what I mean that mm. no one's ever going to stop bootlegging let's get that like some of the best tunes have been bootlegs right yeah like that's not fucking Let's not make no mistake about that. Right. But you go the right way about it. Do you know what I mean? If you go the right yeah. way about it, you could you could just be this unknown guy, yeah, like who made a really good bootleg of a bigger tune. Next, <laughs> I like unglued, yeah? yeah. And next thing, yeah, you 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 give it to the right people. Da, 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 that tune's being battered in every rave in the country every week. I'm just gonna get another drink, so I'll just be like two minutes, okay? Yeah, I need a drink. Yeah, I'm gonna get a drink. So just yeah, like, I'm gonna stay get on. Drink. What are you having? Um, oh, let me test my blood sugar. Do you think I can have a Jack Daniels and ginger beer? I think you should try. Do you think it's weird? Right, BRB then. Right, uh, BRB. Yeah, might go to the toilet as well actually. <laughs>